We've come to give you worship, God, yeah. We've come to give you praise. Oh, you are worthy of our praise. We call you Adonai. We declare you awesome. The Ancient of Days. Even as we begin this month of July, as we gather together to share in the Holy Communion for the month of July, we cry unto you, Adonai. We cry unto you, Abba, Father. Father, have your way, O Lord. Father, accept our worship. Father, accept our praises. As we go into a short study before breaking bread, Father, let your spirit teach us. The Lord Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, they are life. He says, the entrance of your word brings light, that that light shines in darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. Let the entrance of your word bring light into us. Glorify your name, O Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you all wherever you are joining us for our Holy Communion service for the month of July. As uh, we all know, uh, the seventh number or the seventh month is the month of perfection, is the month of uh, the season when God perfects all that concerns us. And we pray that today, as we go into Holy Communion, God will perfect all that concerns us in the name of Jesus. Our theme for today's study is the extraordinary meal. The extraordinary meal. The Holy Communion is not like pounded yam or fried rice or any 
human meal you can think of. It is extraordinary. It is special in so many dimensions. Praise the name of the Lord. Shall we open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 9, verses 3 and 4. Genesis 9, 3 and 4. There God said, Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb that I have given you all things. But, let's note that, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, you shall not eat. Very earlier on in the human history, God commanded that human beings are not to drink blood. That we are not, that we can eat animals. But he said when you want to kill an animal, first cut the throat, let the blood drain out. Don't eat the blood. That's what the Lord God himself said, where we have just read in Genesis. And he gave the reason. In Exodus, he taught Moses. He said, the blood is meant to atone as a sacrifice. Now the blood, even then, when they didn't know about Jesus, the blood of animals was used to cover their sins. So God puts blood in a special category. That's why he said his children should not drink blood. However, when Jesus Christ came, he said something that confused all those who were listening to him. Let's look at John chapter 6, verses 53 to 58. They were already used to not drinking blood because God himself told them, don't drink blood. Moses said too, don't drink blood. Don't eat blood. Jesus now came in John 53 to 58. Then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, that is, don't mind what Moses said. Don't mind what you know. I am telling you, except you eat the flesh of the son. God has said, don't kill people. Don't eat flesh of human beings. Don't drink blood. So they were confused. He said, except you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, he it is that he said, I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. And verse 58, where we are stopping, he says, This is the bread that came down from heaven. He was talking about himself. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to look at what Jesus said here more closely in today's study before we break bread. Jesus Christ introduced a mystery behind his body and his blood. There are two senses in which we can eat and drink the body of Jesus Christ. And Jesus too, he made reference to the wilderness. He said, your fathers ate manna in the wilderness, but that they still died. Manna was not an ordinary food. The Bible says manna is the food of angels. That they ate food of angels, but they still died. He now said, me, I am bread of life. If you eat me, you won't die. If you drink my blood, you won't die. Yes, Moses has told you don't drink blood, but he said drink my blood. But they were confused. If you continue in that passage, many people left Jesus that day because he said, eat my blood, uh, sorry, eat my body, drink my blood. They were confused. And up till today, many are still confused. But thank God for the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God to answer this controversy is that there are two senses 
in which you can take the body of Jesus and you can drink his blood. Two senses. And each sense means a different thing. Each sense has a different interpretation. And when we understand this, it will help us to know what exactly Jesus was saying. Now, there is the physical eating and drinking. That is, they take Jesus, cut his body with knife, and begin to eat. That is cannibalism. In fact, they said it in the Bible. That, ah, this man wants to teach us cannibalism. We don't want to be part of him. So they left him. That is one sense, physically. Now, we are here now. This is physical bread. This is physical wine. Soon we will eat and drink. That is physical. That is not what Jesus... Jesus didn't say, cut my body and eat my body. Or bring knife, stab me and drink my blood. That's not the sense Jesus was saying it. He was talking in the spiritual sense. He was saying, look, I have been sent by my father. When you receive me, you you, you, I, he says, I am in you. So you have received me. You have eaten me. It's like when in Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 15, 16, the Bible says, talks about, it says, I have found your word and I have eaten it. This is the word of God. Have you seen anybody biting Bible and eating it? No. When the Bible says you have found the word and you are eating it, it's not physically eating the book. It's that you are receiving his word. You are taking his word into you. That's why Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So, his word, like Jeremiah says, you don't physically chew Bible. You receive his word, and it becomes life inside you. So, when Jesus says, eat my body, drink my blood, in that John 6, John 6, he was saying that, accept me as Savior. Let me enter you. Let me dwell in you. When I'm in you, on the last day, I will raise you. So, Holy Communion Physica does not bring salvation. I must make it clear. Because Jesus said in that place that he that eats my body and drinks my blood has eternal life. That I will raise him on the last day. The one he's saying is not physical one. That's why he said, look, even people that ate manna, which is from heaven, they ate it and died. People that eat communion and drink communion, it doesn't mean you are going to heaven, no. If you are not born again, you can eat communion every month. You can eat manna. You can have encounters. Going to heaven and having eternal life is receiving Jesus as your savior, accepting his blood as washing your sins. Let me give a physical illustration too. Because some people are confused. Ah, Shebi is the same blood of Jesus. How come you say the blood of Jesus washes sin? And that at the same time, you are saying Holy Communion does not wash sin. Let me explain in the physical sense. If you take water, the common water, we have. You can drink water from the fridge. You can drink room temperature water. Even if it's a bit warm, or some people that like tea, it's a bit hot, you can drink it. But when we take water that is boiling at 100 degrees, can anyone take boiling water from 100 and start drinking it or have bath? No, you cannot. So the same water, you use it depending on the circumstance for different things. So even though you can drink room temperature water, you can drink water from the fridge, you can not drink water that is boiling. The blood of Jesus washes sin. 
when it is being used for that purpose. You can use his blood to wash your sins. When you come here and you drink, it's the same blood, but this one is not for washing sin. You must confess your sin, ask for the blood to wash your sin. But this one, you are eating in a different dimension. You are receiving this as a solution God has brought, even for our healing, for our strength, to address physical problems. So, when you take the body of Jesus physically, it's addressing and solving physical problems. To solve the question of sin, which is a spiritual problem, you receive Jesus as Savior. You accept his body, you accept his blood for the cleansing in the spiritual realm. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But you can have both. For example... If you take normal water and you put gari there, you can drink it as gari. Well, if you say it is a bar you want, you have to either boil water and mix with the gari, or take your drinking gari, put it on fire, cook it, then it can become a bar. That is why when we gather for communion, we want to have the two of them. We want to drink our gari, we would still want to eat a bar. So, before we take communion, that's why we take prayers of confession. That is why we ensure that we make peace with God. Because the Bible says you cannot eat unworthily. So we separate the spiritual from the physical. When we've sorted out the spiritual, the question of sin, that is when you can now go forth and eat the body and drink the blood, and then it will heal you, it will strengthen you. If you are confused, you have direction. Or like uh, the angel said unto Elijah, I will end up there. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 7 and 8. 1 Kings 19, 7 and 8. At the beginning of the second half of the year, Elijah was down. He was confused. He even said he wanted to die. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched Elijah and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. So imagine us now, we are standing at the beginning of the second half of the year. The journey through July is long. The journey of the second half too is long. You will arise, you will eat of the physical bread, which was similar to what Elijah did. He ate like manna. It was an angel that brought it. And verse 8, he arose, he did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights. So we will eat today, we will drink, and as the Lord lives, we will go in the strength through the month of July in the name of Jesus Christ. And we will receive grace also for the second half of the year. But like we have said, when Jesus was talking in John chapter 6, that if you eat of my body and drink of my blood, that is when you have eternal life. Holy communion does not give eternal life. It does not save from sin. You must accept Jesus separately as Savior, as Lord, and his blood to cleanse your sins. If you come as a sinner to Holy Communion table and you eat it, it won't wash your sins. In fact, 1 Corinthians 11 says, if you eat unworthily, there are many die. It's like taking hot boiling water and drinking it, it can kill. But the same water, if you allow it to cool down, put tea bag, you can enjoy your tea. You can take your bath with warm water, but not boiling water. So that is why the Bible encourages and teaches us that we should not take unworthily. And I pray none of us will take unworthily in the name of Jesus Christ. Ministers of God, please let's come. Let's pray over the bread and the wine. And then my brothers and sisters, wherever you are, 
at home, at work, get ready. If you have a kitchenette or kitchen nearby, get your bread, get your crackers, so that as we are praying here, you are praying also over the communion, so that we can break bread together. We can eat of the Lord's body together. We can drink of the blood of Jesus together. Both for our health, for our strength, for direction, for grace, to see us through for the month of July and beyond. Father, we thank you for seeing us through January, February, March, April, May, and June. Father, Lord God, we thank you that you have gathered us together again at the beginning of July so that we can break bread together. We can drink of the blood to receive grace, to receive strength, to receive direction, to find mercy, to obtain favor. Father, Lord God, let all that you have purposed for your children through the Holy Communion, let them come to pass in this church and in the life of everyone joining us, in their homes, in their offices, wherever they are, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord God, the understanding you want us to have about the two separate senses of the body and the blood of Jesus. Father, let us have that understanding. Let every one of us continue to receive the blood for cleansing of sins, to receive the person of Jesus for our salvation. Let that continue to be constant in our lives and our homes and the lives of our children in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, let us continue to daily, monthly, as often as we have opportunity to also break bread physically and drink of the blood physically so that we can have healing for our bodies, so that we can have strength, so that we are empowered to go forth and do great exploits for you. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we magnify your name. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So choir, please lead us, even as the ministers of God serve the bread and the wine. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the thirsty of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me yours. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Destiny of my soul Man of heaven Man of heaven Fill me Fill me till I want, I want no more Fill my cup Fill me up And make it all 
indeed the blood of Jesus is able to set us free from sin, from sorrow. It's also able physically as we are gathered to set us free from sickness, from weaknesses, from confusion, from imprisonment. Shall we rise on our feet? He says, but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread, that's the body, and drink of that cup, that's the blood. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. So for the next minute, let us examine ourselves. Like we have said, there are two different senses in which we are receiving the blood. The physical helps with physical problems. The spiritual solves the sin problem. Is there any unforgiveness in your life? Is there any sin the Holy Spirit is laying on your heart? Ask now that the blood of Jesus should cleanse you. He says, if your sins are as red as scarlet, he can cleanse them and make them white like snow. That the Lord will cleanse us. The Lord will forgive us by his blood in the spiritual sense. To cleanse us spirit and soul of all sins by his mercy. He says there is no appropriation for, there is no other appropriation for sin except by the blood of Jesus. So that we can proceed to the second sense. So that we can eat the body worthily. So that we can take this communion for July. So that it will benefit you. It will benefit me. It will benefit our families. In the name of Jesus. If you don't sort out the first sense, we cannot benefit from the second. Because like it says, if we take unworthily, it says it will be damnation. Many have even died. I pray none of us will die as a result of taking communion. So ask God to be merciful unto you, to cleanse you, to forgive you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. It says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Shall we together as children of the most high God that have been cleansed of our sins, let us now receive the body of Jesus in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the, the body of Jesus. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had sobbed, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Shall we together now, as redeemed children of the Lord, let us drink of the blood of Jesus in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. The blood of Jesus. Let's begin to pray now. We have taken of his body, we have drank of his blood. It gives strength. Pray, Father, I am standing at the beginning of this seventh month. Let this communion strengthen me. 
Let the blood of Jesus I just drank now. Let it bring healing unto me. Your word says in Leviticus 17, 11, that the life of the body is in the blood. I have drank of the blood of Jesus. Let the life of Jesus. Jesus was never sick. Jesus was never weak. Let me receive grace for my weakness. Let me receive healing for everything wrong with me. Is it in my blood? Is it in my organ? Is it in my nervous system? Whatever it is, by whatever name so called, the blood of Jesus is able to heal. He said we are healed even by the stripes of Jesus. Father, I pray that everyone partaking in this communion, let them receive healing for their bodies, for their minds, for their systems in the name of Jesus Christ. Not only healing. When Elijah received the communion, he received strength. He was able to go for 40 days and 40 nights. We are going into a fasting. We are in, in battle. We need strength. We need everything God has to deliver for us. Father, Lord God, let us receive strength. Let us be able to go through the rest of the year in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord God, strengthen us, O God. Father, Lord God, strengthen us, O God. Father, strengthen us, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we receive strength of the Lord. We receive strength of the Lord. Because it says, if you fail on the day of battle, it means your strength is small. Father, strengthen us, O God. You will not fail on the day of battle. Every battle that will come across you this month, and indeed for the rest of the year, receive strength to overcome. Receive power to overcome. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we magnify your name. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. And the children of God will say, Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanks for watching today's episode of our special Digging Deep. For questioning on any of our Bible study topics, kindly send a message to 080 9975 WhatsApp only. Or send a mail to RCCG Temple of God Parish at gmail.com. Too high.